All right, welcome back again. Uh, so in this, we just want to do a practice problem where we put together some of the skills that we've been learning in our other videos. We'll keep it really short. I know there's more chunks this time than normal. Uh, the practice problem that we're going to do is going to use um, two inputs, uh, I1, which is a normally open momentary, and I2, which is a normally closed momentary. Uh, so you can do all these things in one file. So let's just go ahead and open up PicoSoft. Um, and then let's make sure we can start up a new file. So you can just click on new. Uh, you can save your old one if you want to before you click new, but uh, I didn't. So let's go ahead and just drag a new control over. So this looks like our controller in the project area. Uh, and let's see if we can go do some of these tasks. So these tasks are saying, um, question number one, make Q1 be on when I1 and I2 are broken. Um, so when they're both broken, uh, see if you can make I1 come on. Alright, so see if you can go do that on your own. Alright, so I'll do it as well. So it should be pretty simple. Uh, so we switch over to the circuit diagram and we want I1, I2, we know that they're an AND, and they're going to be controlling Q1. And then I have to say, alright, if I want them both to be passing current through when they're broken. Uh, right now it's a make switch, which is going to block current. So what I want is I want current to come through when they're broken. Um, this question was actually really nice to you um, in that it actually told you the state, right? So you didn't have to worry about the pressed or unpressed. Um, but this should be the circuit uh, that will make this guy work for question number one. All right, now we need to check to see if this thing actually works. Uh, so we'll head over to the simulation area. Uh, the first thing you need to do in a simulation is you need to make sure that your input types actually match the real world. Um, and if you remember from the problem statement, um, it said I1 is normally open momentary. I2 is normally closed momentary. So just switch over here. So I1 was normally open uh, momentary. That actually is the default, so that's great. And then I2 is normally closed momentary. So make sure you actually set those things as appropriate. And then to actually test this thing, I'm going to click on the display, the inputs, um, and I'm going to hit run. So by default, uh, normally 2 is, uh, sorry, I2 is normally closed. Closed means made. So it's made. So this thing is not on by default. Um, you actually have to press I2. Uh, to make it become open, um, and then once it's open, i.e. broken, um, then Q1 turns on. So this thing works great. Um, so as soon as both the inputs are out, so you can see right now it's made on two, as soon as I click it, as soon as it's out, so they're both broken, uh, then Q1 comes on, uh, which you can see by it's going red. All right, that one wasn't too bad. Uh, so that one was nice because it actually gave us a state word in broken, so we didn't have to worry about the switches. Uh, the next two are going to worry about the switches. So they say, um, just do question number two next. So make Q2 come on whenever I1 and I2 are unpressed. So unpressed will be easy. So like, as so long as you're not touching the screen, uh, Q2 will come on. See if you can figure out how to write that rung uh, yourself. All right, so I'm going to do it with you. So when they're unpressed, uh, that means they're in their normal state. Um, so we want when I1 is open and when I2 is closed. So we're going to go back to our diagram. Uh, it's an AND gate, so we know it's going to kind of be similar to the top one, and then it's going to have something related to I1, something related to I2, uh, and then they're going to control Q2. Now we just need to figure out whether they should be makes or breaks. Um, so the unpressed state, I1 normally open. Open means broken. If you want current to flow through when it's open, um, that means you need a break. Um, I2 is normally closed. Closed means made. So it's going to flow through uh, when it's made. Um, so for I2, you do want a make switch. I know it's tricky. This one's nice because the simulation, you can actually see it work. So if I hit play, Q2 should just come on, right? Bam. Um, so right now I know it worked. If I press I1, it should go off, and it does. If I press I2, that should also make it go off, uh, and it does. Um, don't worry about the Q1 line. So you can see that pressing either one 
um, makes it go off, which is what you wanted. And so that answers question number two. All right, hopefully that makes sense. The whole maid closed, like I just have to go over it in my head a couple times and then it all makes sense. Uh, let's see if you can do number three. So number three says make Q3 and Q4, which that's pretty easy, um, be on when either I1 or I2 is pressed. So this is kind of like taking a bunch of things and putting them together. So if you press I1, they'll both turn on. Or if you press I2, they'll both turn on. See if you can make that happen by yourself. All right, I'll do it with you. Uh, so I want uh, to go back to my circuit diagram. So the first thing is I know that I need an OR gate. So I've got something related to I1, something related to I2, and they are going to be controlling Q3 and uh, Q4. I knew it was going to do that to me. Um, so I don't actually want this whole line here. I'm going to use my pencil to make this an OR gate on the input side, and then it's just going to control both outputs. So now I just need to figure up when uh, either one is pressed. Uh, the nice thing is you could look at the rung above and you know it's the reverse, right? Um, but if you wanted to think it through, so this one's normally open, so it's gonna block right now. Um, so it should be a make. The bottom one is normally closed. So if it's closed by default, um, we don't want current to be flowing through um, unless somebody presses the button. So it needs to be a break. Um, always hard to think about. Just just go through it in your head until it all makes sense. Um, this one was easy because you can see it's just the reverse of what it was before. So now if I press either of them, then Q3 and Q4 will come on. Um, effectively, these two will always be the opposite of Q2 if this all works. Um, so right now, uh, Q2 is on just like it used to be. If I press either I1 or I2, the bottom stuff should come on. So I press I1 first. Yep, that one works. I can see that when there's fire, um, so whenever it becomes made, current flows through I1 and it lights them up. If instead I pressed I2, so I'll press I2. Presto, that works as well. So pressing either one uh, causes fire in Q3 and Q4. All right, so that's kind of the it for this video lecture. Um, so you figured up the easy stuff first of, you know, how do I make an and, an or, and a not. Um, and then we did some kind of more complex practice. Um, and you see how it gets a little harder once we bring all the ideas together. That's it for today. Whew, rough first day on PLCs. Uh, we'll see you next time where we learn some more uh, nitty-gritty details of PicoSoft. See you then. Bye.